Let's try a little HNMR. Right now I'm just going to give you the basic concept and then later we're going to use that to do some examples, okay? And so as far as I see, there's three main concepts that you want to know. One is splitting, and I'm not going to talk about splitting within the same carbon. So I'm just going to talk about uh, analyzing your general HNMR uh, uh, spectra. Then we'll talk about integration, and then finally shift. Okay, so let me give you the basics of this. First of all, splitting. So let's take a look at, let's say we have a hydrogen here, okay, and it's on a carbon. And what happens is the hydrogen on this carbon in the NMR spectra will be split by hydrogens on a neighboring carbon. So there could be other hydrogens here like this. And like this, let's say there's three hydrogens on that one carbon. But over here, let's say there's one, okay? And I'm going to put a star by that hydrogen. Let's say that's our hydrogen of interest right now. That hydrogen, if there's one hydrogen over here, would give two peaks or a doublet, okay? So the one with the star would give two peaks or a doublet, okay? Because it's going to be split by the hydrogen on the carbon next to the carbon with the hydrogen. So really, the neighboring hydrogens, all right? So this hydrogen would be split by the neighboring hydrogens, and it will give one more peak than the number of neighboring hydrogens. So since there's one hydrogen here, two peaks. If there were two hydrogens here, like that, now, it will give one, two, and you add one to that, three peaks. So again, one more than the number of neighboring hydrogens. So there's two neighboring hydrogens. It'll give three peaks, kind of in a pyramid sort of shape. In the case that there were three hydrogens neighboring this carbon, like that, neighboring this hydrogen and on this carbon, then this hydrogen right there would be would form a peak that has one, two, three, plus one, four um, peaks. And it'll look kind of like this, where the middle ones will be higher than the outside ones. Okay? So you get a quartet, because this hydrogen is split by one, two, three other hydrogens on the neighboring carbon. Okay? So you always add at one to the number of neighboring hydrogens. Now let's take another example, just so you can kind of get used to this. Let's say, go back to what I had earlier, let's say I had this, something like that, okay? Now like we did before, this hydrogen right there, you look at the neighboring hydrogens to figure out what peak it would give. It would give uh, one, two, plus one, three, a triplet. So that would give a triplet, so let's say we had an NMR spectrum, we'd have a triplet, like that, okay? And that would be from, that would represent all any of those three equivalent hydrogens on the carbon on the left-hand side. Now, let's take a look at this one. Okay, either of these hydrogens, they have three neighboring hydrogens, one, two, three. So they would split to form a quartet, okay? So they'll get a quartet. like that, okay? And that's from these hydrogens right there. And that's what your NMR spectrum would look like as far as the splitting goes. So, the take home message for splitting is that you get one more than the number of peaks, one, one more than the number of hydrogens on the neighboring carbon. So in this case, the neighboring carbon uh, has two, uh, uh, hydrogen, so you'll get a total of three peaks. In this case, the neighboring carbon has three hydrogens, so you get a total of four peaks like that. That's how the splitting works. Okay, next step is called integration. Let me tell you what integration is. Uh, actually, with the NMR machines, they can find the area under these peaks, and the area under those peaks is proportional to the number of hydrogens uh, on that carbon. So what you would get in this uh, situation, let me get a different color pen if I have one here. 
Uh, let's try green, I guess. The integration here, and, and it could show it in different ways on the diagram. Sometimes they just write it. Sometimes you have to do a little measurement. It sort of depends. But in this case, the integration would be 2 uh, to 3. Now, why is that, you might ask? Well, this peak comes from here, and there's two hydrogens there. And so it would be 2. This peak over here comes from these three hydrogens, and so it would be 3. So it would be in a 2 to 3 ratio. So the integration could look different. It could say 20 to 30. Anything that's in a 2 to 3 ratio um, would be the integration. So it doesn't necessarily tell you the number of hydrogens here, but it, it tells you the ratio of hydrogens for each peak. Uh, so, if you knew, for example, that the total number of hydrogens on here was 5, then you could say, okay, since the sum of this is 5, I know there's a total of, uh, this is in the exact ratio, so there must be 2 hydrogens here and 3 here, if you happen to know that there was 5 total hydrogens. So integration tells you, um, for the hydrogens that represent that peak, the either the number of hydrogens there or really the ratio of hydrogens compared to hydrogens on a different peak. Okay, so this is uh, has a three times greater uh, this has an area of kind of three if you want and this has an area of two. Okay, That's what integration means, so that's your second piece of information. Not all NMRs give you integration, but sometimes they do. And then shift is the final one. Okay, Here's how shift works. Over here on the diagram, you have a zero, okay? And then it actually counts kind of in reverse order, as you might expect with a normal graph. And we label these delta, the numbers, uh, and you'll see usually units of ppm. And then it'll go up one, two, three, four, five, all the way up to somewhere around ten sometimes, or nine, or it depends what's on the diagram. The more that something is shifted to higher numbers, or to, to the left, the more that those hydrogens are near uh, an electronegative element, if you want, or some sort of um, something on the molecule that gives electrons, okay, or has electrons available. So, uh, actually the way I uh, drew this works nicely. Notice that I put the peak of these hydrogens more shifted to the left because there's a chlorine here. Uh, and chlorine will cause a shift to the left. Whereas this one, there's no, there's a chlorine, but it's not directly uh, connected or as close to these hydrogens. So I put it as shifted a little bit more to the right or to lower numbers. So again, uh, things with electrons will cause a shift to higher numbers or more to the left on the diagram. And if you look in your average textbook, they'll have this huge table. I've got a textbook right here with like 20 something things listed in it. It depends what your instructor wants. Uh, maybe they want you to memorize these things and that's what you have to do. You might have to ask your instructor. But in general, uh, you might be able to get away with knowing general trends. So for example, what I remember is that if it's an alkane or even an alkene or alkyne, it's going to be somewhere between 0 and 2. Alkane is closer to 0. The alkyne with more uh, electrons in the triple bond will be closer to 2. But it's going to be somewhere between 0 and 2 if it has no special functional groups besides the bonding. Uh, things like halogens or oxygens, uh, really close to the hydrogens, like in this case, will cause a peak to be between 3 and 4, somewhere in that area. Uh, same with oxygen. So halogens or oxygen doesn't matter, somewhere between 3 and 4. If you have an aromatic, you have this like clump peak or uh, some sort of uh, mushy peak. It could have a lot of splitting. It might not. It might be hard to tell. It could be a single peak. looks a little different, but it'll have a huge shift somewhere between 6 and 10. So something close to aromatic will have a pretty high shift. Uh, if you see, say, an alcohol, I didn't put an alcohol on here, but an OH group, uh, that can vary a lot where the shift is but it should have an integration somewhere around one. It could have peaks. Sometimes it's just a blob looking. I've seen that anywhere between like one and five. It could really vary. Um, 
the more, if I had a second chlorine on here, for example, the splitting would be different, but that just, a second chlorine next to a hydrogen would just cause a much bigger shift. It may be closer to six.